Praise God, something good is going to happen today. Did you know that something good from heaven above is going to happen in your life today? 1 John 4.4, 4, God actually calls us His little children. And He says, you've already overcome the world. You know why? Because greater is He who lives in us than he that lives in this world. So let's just welcome the Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit, help us. Greater are you living on the inside of us than the enemy in the world. So Father God, we thank you that we can overcome anything and everything. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And Father, I just pray for my brother and sister that you comfort and help them today. Encourage them. Lord, with this message, encourage all of us, Father God, to walk the path of honor to the glory of God. Amen. Today, we are celebrating Mother's Day. I love Mother's Day because I love my mom and I love my grandmother. And I've been so already impacted in my life by the moms in my life, the spiritual moms in my life, that I know this is going to be a great blessing to you. Listen, I'm going to interrupt our series. This is an exciting series we're in, but for just one weekend, for this very good reason, to celebrate one of the greatest life-giving forces on earth, motherhood. Mom power is unstoppable if you didn't know that. Moms are both triumphant and creative over extreme adversity. You know, moms teach us stuff, don't they? They disciple us, they mentor us. Moms teach us stuff. Mom, moms are educators, aren't they? But you know, moms also learn from their kids too. That's, that's right. There was one mom, she learned this. She said that she learned that if you hook a dog leash over a ceiling fan, the motor is not strong enough to rotate a 42 pound boy wearing a Batman underwear and Superman cape. But it is strong enough that if you throw a baseball into the ceiling fan while it's running, you can make a grand slam through your double pane window. That's what that mom learned from her son. <laughs> Another mom learned that when you hear the toilet flush and the words, uh-oh, it's already too late. Another mom, she learned that brake fluid mixed with Clorox makes smoke. Yep, lots and lots of smoke. Another mom, she learned a couple of lessons. She learned that Play-Doh and microwave should never be used in the same sentence. And she also learned that super glue is forever. <laughs> No matter how much jello, this one mom learned that no matter how much jello you put in the swimming pool, your kids still can't walk on water. And another precious grandmother, she learned this babysitting her grandkids for the day. She learned that marbles in the gas tank make lots of noise when you're driving. One more. I love this one from this mom in Austin, Texas. She learned a very complicated lesson. She learned that the spin cycle on the washing machine does not make earthworms dizzy, but it will, however, make the house cat dizzy. And also she learned that when the cat is dizzy, it throws up twice its body weight. So those are lessons that moms learn every day. Today, look, we are gonna celebrate Mother's Day and I want you to know who this is for. This is for you if you are one of those hero moms that we all love and recognize and honor. This is also for you if you ever have had or you're the, the child of one of those great moms and that you love and you want to celebrate that beautiful woman. Also, this is for you if you've never truly known the kindness and the tender love of a mother. These next few minutes, I really believe they're especially for you. They're especially for you. So stay tuned on this very special day when we celebrate the, the specialness of moms, if you've ever been cut or deeply scarred by family abuse, maybe, maybe you've never been in a position to be able to truly celebrate Mother's Day like others have. You just kind of watch. This is the start of a new day, a new season for you. Listen to this, Ephesians 1 verse 5. For God foreordained us planned in love for us to be adopted as his own children through Jesus Christ in accordance with the purpose of his will because it was his kind intent. Did you get that? That look, God already foreordained for you and I to be adopted into his family. No matter how great your mama was or no matter how um, neglectful or abusive or 
MIA that your mom was, God already foreordained for each of us to be adopted in, as his own children into his family. Look, that, all that to say, God's got you on his mind. You are on God's mind. You and having you as part of his precious family. God deeply cares about any hurt that you've endured, any lack that you've gone through, any neglect that you've suffered. God cares about that in your life. And he has great plans for you. If you don't believe that one, listen to this. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. See what an incredible quality of love the Father has shown to us that we would be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of God. And so we are. We are through Jesus Christ. We're in his family. In God's family, nobody is fatherless or motherless. God connects you and me perfectly. Oh, that's exciting. God meets our needs abundantly, your needs abundantly. He puts the isolated in family. That's what Psalm 68 verse 6 says, that God puts the isolated in family. Jesus said this in Matthew 6. He said, everybody pray this way. You know it, the opening of the Lord's Prayer. He said, pray this way. Our Father who is in heaven. You see, it's a family prayer. It's not an isolationist prayer. It's a family prayer. God has always destined you to be part of his beautiful family. Some have a bad taste even just for the term family because of hurts, rejections, abuse. But my friend, God restores. So let's start here. Let's get right out down to the beginning, the foundation of the biblical definition straight. Let's get that straight for the word mother, for the term mother. Our word mother in English that we use is translated from the Hebrew word em, just em, which is the exact opposite of oppression. In the Hebrew language, mother means first or strong water. Water turns a desert into an oasis. She is a connector, a connection to life, the foundation of community and culture. Mothers bind together. Mothers can unite. Mothers make powerful what is weak. That's the power of mother anointing that God has given and instilled into mother. Mother means strong water. The key word for mother, listen to this, is built into the word faithful. It's interesting that the word fear in Hebrew has the root mother in it, but it's asking the question, where? Where is the mother? That's what the word fear means. Where, where is the mother? Or fear comes when there is no motherhood, when there is no mothering. You know, children, when they're scared, they often cry out for their mother. They want that connection. I've seen grown-ups who are in a time of great, terrible crisis, in pain, cry out almost unconsciously for their mother. Spiritual nurturing is that strong water in the desert. We celebrate our moms, but doubly we celebrate spiritual moms who are activated in mentoring, guiding the next generation. You know, a spirit-led mom releases strong water, a spiritual connection that eradicates fear. That's how you know you get some mothering going on. It eradicates fear. We have a very fearful generation, don't we? We have a fearful culture on our hands. A culture that has been so deprived of our anointed connectors, our spiritual moms who unite, who are strong water in the desert. But friend, no more, right? Can we say no more? When a culture, a society has been damaged, God often uses a key mother to restore community. It's a biblical fact. So if a culture is weak, if a culture is fractured or without unity, what can we or what should we conclude? Let's do a little reverse engineering here. That's right. We're not allowing the mothers to influence, to speak, to steer, to be heard. Just because a four-year-old can handle an iPad better than his grandmother, it doesn't mean that the four-year-old knows anything about life. He needs some strong water or he'll live disconnected from reality, won't he? In a dry desert of foolishness, the rest of his 
short life. Humanity evolves downward, not upwards. It's the law of disintegration. We need strong medicine, strong water. That's what I call mothering. Education is good, but knowledge without wisdom is like horsepower without maturity. It's an accident waiting to happen. That's why you don't give your seven-year-old the keys to the family car. A weary, weary mom, she summed it up. Her, she summed up her present situation this way. She said this. She said, I'm surrounded by little children all day long. So unless Dora sings it, Bob builds it, or Dr. Zeus wrote it, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> That's a precious mom who doesn't need to be liberated, but celebrated. We need to celebrate our moms. That's what this is about, celebrating, honoring God's invention called motherhood. See, feminism can never be a substitute for the anointing power of motherhood. Why would anyone chase equal rights when you can have the best rights, God rights? Well, Pastor Stephen, not every woman wants to have children. Well, my friend, well said. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely correct. But what makes you think that the power of true motherhood is only in birthing children? Deborah, famous woman in the Bible, she was a prophetess. Deborah, the prophetess, was a judge. Jael, her peer, was a warrior who defeated the enemy, an enemy king, with a tent peg. Mothers defend. If you look at Judges, chapter 5, verse 7, it says this, Village life ceased until I, Deborah, arose a mother. Can I just read that again? Village life ceased until I, Deborah, arose a mother. A mother. But we know Deborah was a judge. She was a great prophetess, but she tapped the mothering anointing. You see, motherhood is about culture. It's about directing. It's about unity. It's about society, education. Motherhood is about supply. It's about imports and exports. It's about protection, direction. Some of the most famous mothers never even gave birth to children, but utilized the anointing and the power of motherhood. Mother Teresa, Florence Nightingale, never had children, either one of them, but they were empowered to restore, to heal, not just um, small neighborhoods, but the world, cultures, society. They were that influential. The strength of a mother is not domination, but supplying life, strong water, strong medicine, protection, direction, and yes, sometimes even hosting a neighborhood block party. One precious young mother, she said one time, she said, having kids, she said, is like continually having to clean up after a party that you didn't get to attend. <laughs> there is the nurturing side of the super mom power, but there is also the dangerous side of the super mom power. One of the most dangerous forces that you can run into in a force is a mama bear. A mama bear who has lost her cubs or feels like her cubs are endangered. Oh, that's scary, scary trouble. One time Pam and I, we were watching this Animal Planet show and, all, and the, the narrator was talking about, well, there's this mother bear and she has three beautiful little cubs and she's down by the river and she was fishing for salmon just to take care of her family. And then the narrator said, but oh, look, and there came this huge male grizzly and he was kind of sauntering up to the river and he could see the mother and her three cubs. Now, the narrator let us know that a male grizzly bear will look at those cubs like they're little hors d'oeuvres to his next big meal. And so this big male kept started walking and heading toward the little family. <laughs> well, it was so good the way even the cinematographer captured it. The mother bear went crazy. She was half the size, half the weight, probably half the strength of that big old male grizzly. But she came running across that river, paws flying, roaring, and the water was spraying. And I got a feeling that male grizzly, he kind of looked for a second and he was like, man, no buffet is worth this. Come on, this is, I, I want nothing to do. So that male, he kind of looked and hesitated and he turned around and man, he hightailed it out. It was so funny to see this cute little mama bear 
cute. She was just little chasing this gigantic grizzly male bear. And he was like, I want nothing to do with that. I, I can't tangle with a mom. Moms are powerful. They're willing to lay down their life for their charge, aren't they? The life-giving force of motherhood is a God-ordained force and anointing. It's not human. See, that's the thing. Motherhood is not human. It's not invented by mankind, believe it or not. Motherhood is divinely, supernaturally forged to be a transcendent virtue that defies all natural understanding. This is why no matter who you are, this affects you and me. This affects our life. Like a wise old fisherman with no teeth and a hairless cat once advised me. He said, Stephen, you don't pull on Superman's cape. You don't spit unless it's good and calm. You don't pull the mask off the old Lone Ranger and you never, ever lie to mom. Of course, I'm kidding about the hairless cat. <laughs> One time I lied to my grandmother. And she said, Stephen, only one plum. She had this little pantry, and this basket of plums in there. And I had a hankering for one. And as I was going, I said, Nan, can I have one? She goes, yes, one, but only one. Well, I don't know what overcame me. I, I mean, I think I was maybe 11 years old. But I went in that pantry and I grabbed the one. But the second one looked even more delicious. And so I grabbed the second one too. And I kind of palmed it. So I had the one on the open, and as I was walking out, wouldn't you know what my grandmother even said? She goes, you just took one, right? So not only was I thieving, now I'm lying to my grandmother. I'm like, yep, just one. I walked out back. The first one tasted good, but the second one, I don't know what it was, but it was ultra sweet. I ate that second plum, and as I ate it, something, I had a bad feeling come over me, and I thought, something's not right. And about 10 minutes later, I was like dizzy and I was like, suddenly I just vomited. I, I got really sick. And once I vomited, it was like Jonah coming out of the whale of the belly. That, it seemed to cure everything that ailed me. And I had to go back in the house and I said, Nan, I said, I'm so sorry. I lied to you. I took two plums. I had to confess my sins. But I'm telling you, don't lie to your mom. Don't lie or steal from your mom or your grandmother. It's bad news. You don't want to be in that kind of state. Look, the devil hates motherhood. His desire is to destroy and eliminate its influence. He fears motherhood. He resents the mother's ability to carry, protect life and bring it to maturity. He still resents the motherly power that carried God's seed of his word in Mary's womb to give birth to the savior of all of humanity. By the way, who also is the destroyer of all of his demonic works, right? Jesus destroys the enemy's works. Yes, he resents and hates motherhood because of that. Look, that's why abortion is such a huge push of the enemy's agenda. It's never been a promotion or an advancement for women's rights. No, 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 no. It's not just an attack against babies and the future generation. Look, abortion is not just an attack against babies and the future generation. It's partly that, but it's also a strategic attack against motherhood. Satan is terrified of mom power and the warrior ability that it supplies to unite families, to unite the culture, the community, even the country. Country. The devil is terrified and afraid of that mama bear anointing, and he should be. Jeremiah 31, verse 22. For the Lord has created a new thing in the land. Oh, well, what is it? A female shall compass, woo, win, and protect a man. Oh, my goodness. You see, people, ever since the Garden of Eden, people Long, they desire to be covered and protected. In the Garden of Eden, we lost all of our God covering. A life is never so compassed and surrounded as when that life is a baby in its mother's womb and loved. Jesus, the Son of God, came to earth through that protection of a mother's womb. Isn't that amazing? God's only begotten son. Look at the message version of Jeremiah 31 verse 22. God will create a new thing in this land. 
A transformed woman will embrace the transforming God. Oh my goodness. Motherhood. The anointing of motherhood. So, the seed of honor in the right ground produces a harvest of honor. So let's unpack that. The seed of honor in the right ground produces a, a harvest of honor. No matter who you are, this matters to you. See, Mother's Day matters to you and me. Doesn't matter if you're a CEO, doesn't matter if you're an NBA basketball player, doesn't matter who you are, this matters to you. A life without honor is doomed to fail. And motherhood is an opportunity for you. It doesn't matter what your mama did or it doesn't matter if she succeeded or if she failed. Mother's Day is more about honor than it is even about the preciousness of motherhood. Real moms are amazing. Look, I was so fortunate as to be raised by an amazing mom. My mom was a single parent, but she mentored me, my brother, and my sister in God's love. She taught us to love God's word. She discipled us in God's word. Do you realize that honoring God's gift of motherhood comes with blessings? That's right. And that should make that should make it of great interest to every one of us, regardless of how old you are, whether you're male or female, or, and here's a big one, regardless of whether you had a good mom, a weak mom, an abusive mom, or no mom. That's right. God's word guides us into the mysterious blessings that belong to those who know how to recognize and honor and celebrate God's gift of motherhood. Notice, I didn't say that blessing is for those who have a great mom, because of course that's true. Having a wonderful mom or grandmother is a blessing that you and I should be thankful for. But the real blessing, the real activation of God's promises are triggered when you understand and honor God's order and call to motherhood. I saw on TV uh, an interview with a young woman, she was about 22, and she was missing her arm right from her shoulder down. And she had, she began to tell her story that when she was in the womb, her biological mother had attempted to abort her and that, that the abortion was unsuccessful, thank God, but it did rip her arm off. And there she was now, about 21 years old, beautiful, beautiful young woman, just with joy on her face. And she said that she was adopted by a young couple. They raised her in a Christian family to know Jesus, to love Jesus, and from the very beginning taught her how to forgive her biological mom, that that was the right thing to do. That was the honorable thing to do. And she walked in that. And you know what happened? That forgiveness was so powerful that one day she reached out to her biological mom and even got to meet her and befriend her and pray a blessing over her. I'm not saying that that's going to happen for you, no matter what your circumstances have been. But I'm just telling you, that's the power of when you honor the anointing of God, motherhood, all things are possible. You might say, well, Stephen, that just, that sounds just so impossible. But remember, with God, all things are possible. Deuteronomy 5, verse 16, it says this, Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God commanded you, that your days may be prolonged and that it may go well with you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. You see, this is interesting that this is the fifth commandment of the famous Ten Commandments, but it is the very first commandment with a promise, and that has to do with human relations. You might be thinking, oh, Stephen, I just, I just don't know how that's relevant to me. Oh, but you see, you're not alone. Otherwise, more people in life would be living the blessed life. Do you realize there are so many people that had loving moms, caring moms, even great moms, and yet they don't live the blessed life? Do you know why? Well, it's not because they had a lack of motherhood in their life. It's because they did not honor the gift. They did not honor the gift of God, motherhood. No, they didn't recognize and celebrate God's gift of motherhood. On the other hand, there have been people that have been rejected, deprived, like that young woman, 21 years old, who somebody attempted to abort her. Look, you can't think of any more rejection than that. 
and yet she lives a blessed life. She has more joy than most people I see as I go through um, life, walking around in a community. She had more joy and more zeal for life than most people I run into. Why? Because she recognized the power, the anointing, and in spite of the failure of her biological mom, she overcame that personal affliction and she honors God's gifts. She honors God's word. She does the right thing. So how do you apply this to your life? Okay, so let me give you three steps, very simple, that you can apply to your life so that you can see for yourself the blessing of God in your life as it pertains to motherhood and honor. How do you take Mother's Day and use it as momentum to honor? Remember what I said, you got to put the right seeds into the right ground. Number one, let's start right really simple. Honor your mother, honor your grandmother. For some, this is easy, but still in the light of this message, is it? Maybe it's time to add a new dimension of transparency. Maybe you honor your mom in a way that's convenient for you, but not with the weight that honors God. See, the Holy Spirit's speaking to you right now, and I'm gonna let him direct you. For others, this may seem completely impossible. And if it does, you're the perfect person for this directive. Honor means heavy with value. This is about you being honorable before God, not the other person, no matter how much they failed. You see, when you're honorable, when you are honorable, you open the door of blessing. Remember what I said, the right seed for the right ground. Maybe you were abandoned and forsaken like that young woman. But with God's help right now, honor your mom by forgiving, releasing, blessing. If your mom or grandmother is no longer here on earth, you can still honor them by saying, I forgive, I let go. Or if they were great, you can say, God, I'm thankful for what they did. I'm thankful for their investment. Honor your mother. Number two, honor your spiritual parent. Who gives you spiritual encouragement and direction? Honor those people. Jesus was told in Luke chapter 8, verse 20, that his mother and brothers were outside wanting to see him. He looked around the room and he said this. He said, my mother and my brothers are those who listen to the word of God and do it. Isn't that strong? Jesus esteemed connection to God's word far above biology, far above human blood. He esteemed the word of God, the blood of God. So pull a Jesus right now and honor your spiritual parent. And number three, honor God's gift of motherhood. We all need to be part of this campaign, friends. Our society, our culture, it depends on it. Our neighborhoods are desperate for this. Motherhood, as I said, is not a man-made invention. It is a God-ordained superpower, and it is critical to our unity, our cohesion. Honor God's gift of motherhood by refusing to ever vote against it, by refusing to disrespect or dishonor one of the most precious callings on earth motherhood. Do you feel discouraged right now? Have you been working through some things and just feeling alone? Do you feel forgotten? My mom is a single mom. She used to always speak Psalm 68 verse 5 over us kids. She used to remind us, she'd say, God would be a father to the fatherless. She said, never forget that kids. God's going to be a father to the fatherless. And she would say, you're not fatherless. You've got God Almighty watching over you. She would always instill the word, direct us to the word of God. So I want to do the same for you right now. I want to direct you to the word of God and what he's saying over you right now. Ephesians 2 verse 19. You are no longer outsiders and exiles, aliens without the rights of citizenship, but you are fellow citizens with the saints, God's people, and are members of God's household. Whew. Through Jesus Christ, we are made children of God and we enjoy all the rights and the privileges of the household. Did you get that? It's what some people maybe call refrigerator rights. See, kids don't go and ask to get in the fridge. They just indulge. God wants you to be his daughter, his son with those refrigerator rights. I can't say it any better than this. In Christ Jesus, you 
belong. I didn't read it to you earlier, but now I just can't hold it back from you any longer. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. This is for you. But God, to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love which He loved us, which I'm going to say, which He loved you, even when we were dead by our own trespasses, He made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. My friend, God has intense love for you. And so while you were still disconnected, while we were out of the family, God made a way for us to come in and belong. You belong in the family of God. I want you to pray this prayer with me and welcome Jesus, the way, the truth, the life, the doorway into the family so that you can enjoy all of these benefits. Just pray this simple prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, today is the day I'm coming home to the Father's family. You paid the great price for me, for all of my sin, dying on the cross in my place. Forgive me, restore me, now connect me to the power of your love. In your great name, Jesus, amen. 